So today I'm going to tell you why these high value items routinely sell for us. So I'll give you the inside dope on them. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about some of the items that I sell for some phenomenally good money. I'm going to tell you why they go for the kind of money that they do, that we routinely sell these sorts of items over and over and over again. And I'll tell you where I got these specific pieces from. Now, we do mostly vintage and collectibles with this store here. So the majority of the items are obviously tied to specific categories and niches. Tobacco. Tobacco items sell extremely well, and I do mean extremely well. We've sold thousands, probably tens of thousands of dollars in labels and things related to tobacco. Now, this is a Duke of Durham smoking tobacco, and this is a label off of one of the bags of tobacco from the 1870s or 80s. Now, ones going up in the 20s and 30s will still carry a value because these items were 100% meant to be discarded. So labels off of disposable items usually aren't safe, so there's very few of them around today. So there's always a value in these. Usually the older they are, the rarer they are, and the more valuable they will be. Now, these are sorts of items that I will routinely find at estate sales in big bulk lots of paper and things along that line. Now, this one sold for $124 and some change plus shipping. So it was a great item. We have almost nothing into it. It was purchased with a large lot, one of probably a dozen or so large lots of this sort of thing that we have bought from old collectors and estates and places like that. Now, items tied to fishing and sports related usually sell extremely well for us. Now, I don't hunt out sports related items personally. I'm not a sports buff at all. I do fish, though. Uh, things that have to do with fly fishing tend to do extremely well. And that appears to be what we got here. Somebody trout fishing, somebody fly fishing for trout, basically. You can see the lines wrapped around the frame. You can see the hook. You can see the fish. There he is with the, pulling his canoe into his campsite. Now, the artwork itself is why this one sold, as well as the age. It's from 1880s, and that's why we got just over $64 for this item here. Now, trade cards are usually something that we do phenomenally well with. Many times, they're similar in size to postcards. And when I buy big lots of paper that mostly include postcards, I usually get some of these sorts of items here. I also buy them from collections. I'll go to auctions. I have pickers. So there's a ton of different places I can get these at. I've even bought high-dollar cards from uh, antique malls and flea markets also. This one here sold for 80 bucks. To the average person who's probably seen some soap iron cards, the whales in most of them, but this is a unique pattern. There's actually a book just on soap iron trade cards because there were so many different variants and varieties. Some of them can go for hundreds of dollars. So this is one of the rarer ones here. The color is different. The scheme is different. The whole atmosphere of this card is much different. And that's why this specific card got us 80 bucks plus shipping. Now, had this been the average card, we would have been lucky to get about 8 or 10 bucks for it. So knowing variety and version, obviously, is a great way to do it. To know that, you'd have to be in this area or you'd have to have the price guide. The guidebook you can probably get from your local library for nothing. Use it the few times you will and just take it back. Now, I do love vintage military items. Now, knowing what this is from is key. There's many different books out there that will identify buttons such as this. You can use Chrome as well. It works just fine. This was bought in a large assortment of mixed buttons. There were some ladies' buttons in there and things like that. Now, I sold two of these to the very same person. This person has bought probably five or $6,000 just themselves from us in buttons and things along that line, military items. Now, why would this one be worth some decent money? Well, it's early, and the key factor here is that emblem on the front of these buttons is for the U.S. Signal Corps. 
and pretty much anything from the signal corps goes for some pretty decent money because there wasn't many of them it's not like the army or infantry or something where there's thousands tens of thousands of soldiers this corps had a limited amount of members of people in it and finding buttons from it is extremely difficult especially larger ones this one's a coat size button we got 40 bucks out of this one here it's original it's from the time frame again you need to have some information you can date this button by the information on the back of the button as well as how it is written and there are books to help you identify that I've got videos if you check in to my prior videos and buttons that actually have a list of the button books that go with this so as well as selling the last one I just showed you for 40 bucks that same person bought this one here for 40 bucks if I'm lucky I may have a nickel in each one of these I knew instantly what they were. I knew instantly the value on these also. So knowing a little bit about something, digging into it, having the proper information can make you a lot of money. Now department store collectibles is another area that I make phenomenal money with. Now this is from John Wanamaker and he had a department store, branches of them from what I understand too. There's not much left from any of the buildings, anything inside of it other than like bags and some advertising cards and a few things like that other than some of the uniform buttons. Now even photographs or anything like that from a Wanamaker department store are extremely scarce and very seldom show up. Now this is a uniform button from one of the uniforms worn by the employees in his department store, maybe the doorman or something along that line. I've sold a few of these, they all go for decent money. This one went for well over 40 bucks plus shipping just because it's tied to a department store that has long since been defunct it was a well-known national brand though when these were around when this button was made so knowing a little bit about the history knowing about the emblem and their advertisement uh, campaigns you'd instantly have recognized this as being a Wanamaker now you could chrome this too this is something that you could photo look up on Google and use Chrome to find what this was and this is one of those things that showed up in a little bag of buttons somewhere for just a couple of bucks now sheet music is another area that I do phenomenally well I didn't pay a dime for this sheet as well as thousands and thousands of other ones here now the biggest factor in here is where this is supposed to be taking place uh, this is a place called Niblo's Garden now look that up if you want to know anything about this. Most people may assume just by looking at, you know, the, the lack of illustrations and the whole works on this one that it's probably not going to be worth a lot of money. The song title doesn't sound very good. The composer and, and um, the poet isn't very good in this one either. It's early though, so it has some potential. But Niblo's Garden was a place where... Uh, dignitaries from other countries would hold events and things like that. The Japanese consulate would go there all the time. There, it's a huge area. There's stereo view cards, uh, CDVs, all sorts of things from Niblo's Garden. And that's the only reason this item uh, sold for 150 bucks. Now, I've sold other items from similar time frames, including stereo views, CDVs myself, from Niblo's Garden. That was the key to pricing this and knowing what to, what to do with this. If you didn't look up the biggest factor in this one, the Niblo's Garden, you'd miss the whole point on why this one sold for 150 bucks. Now, tobacco silks is what we're looking at here. These were issued in packs or, uh, I guess, boxes of tobacco at one time. This is a single silk, one at a time. That's all you'd be able to get of these. Now, one area that we found some of these at that we've done extremely well, sometimes they'll stitch them into pillowcases and things like that. So these are items that you can find um, stitching into something. And unless you know what it is, you might assume it's just printed fabric or something along that line. This was actually a collection series from a college sports set. And this is from West Point, the military academy here in the U.S. It's their emblem that you see up there on the top right. Now, interesting fact, that same emblem are on some of the newer buttons, 1910 and newer, from West Point as well. So if you run into that design on a button, it's from West Point Military Academy. Now, this one I took 40 bucks for. 
I have literally nothing into it. We invested around $1,400 into a massive assortment of these sorts of things from a collector's estate. We went back and forth. We, we still have a ton of them, honestly. But I've made so much money off of just the initial 100 or so that we listed that at this point, somebody sent me a reasonable offer. I just took it. On average, I probably have invested into each one of these about two bucks, maybe 220 at the at the very, very top end on these. And we've sold several thousand dollars worth of these. So at this point, it's all pretty much just profit, less eBay fees. Now, I've also talked about World's Fair items, and this is a World's Fair trade card from 1876. Uh, the big giveaway here is the word main building. So I instantly know stuff like that. The Horticultural Hall, that's another one. Agricultural Hall, Memorial Hall. Most every World's Fair has those building titles on it up until at least 1900. Now, when you want to know what World's Fair it's from, you pretty much just type in the main building, type in the word main building, World's Fair, on a Chrome search, and you're going to get images of the main buildings from pretty much all the World's Fair. So all you got to do is pick which one, the right one you have, and that's how you are able to list these without much trouble at all. Now, this is for a, um, a company, a pharmacist company, um, they did German syrup and August flower, which is like a perfume. Um, this is quite rare compared to those sorts of things. It actually has a train stop for their plant, for their manufacturing laboratories and stuff as well. This one we got around 50 bucks for plus shipping. It's been up for a little while. We have a few of these. Um, it's not in perfect condition either. The image wasn't great. There's World's Fair collectibles that are worth money up into the 80s even that you can still get really good money for. Now here's another item tied to the 1876 Centennial World's Fair also. This is from one of the uniforms of one of the guards. Security for the World's Fair. It'd be like police officers of the fair. The CG stands for Centennial Guard. 1776 to 1876. It was the centennial celebration as well as the World's Fair. So knowing what this is, again, this one's in many of the books, so it's not something super hard to look up. Probably a Chrome search, photo search, would have given you enough information to instantly tell what this button was. So great sale here, 45 bucks shipped out the door. Now another ploy we do to get better money on some better items, like this early one-piece hunt club button here. It's a little hard to see the back mark on it, but it is a Scoville Manufacturing Company, and it's dateable by how it's stamped on the back once again. We list one at a time. When one sells, then we list another one here. Now, I have another one active because we've sold three or four of just this one size and two or three of another size. That helps us keep the, the scarcity, the perceived value up, and the whole works on these. So this one here we sold for 45 bucks on a counter offer to a watcher. This one here we sold for 46 bucks plus some change plus shipping on this one to another person. And then here's yet another one that did sell for $40.25. So one aspect you don't want to do is flood the categories, flood your items onto the market all at the same time if they're like-to-like -like identical items. Because what's going to happen is it will pretty much diminish the value because it won't be perceived to be as valuable. It'll look like there's a ton of them available. No rush, no anything else like that. This came from an assortment from a collection of someone who collected golf material, golf clubs, golf membership buttons and pins and things along that line, and some items that they found were actually tied to hunt clubs. There may have been a golf course at this specific one too, but this is for like a fox hunting club here, here in the U.S. as well. These as well have been paid for. We've listed other items from the same purchase. Those have already made us a profit. So this is all profit from this point forward. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live, subscribe and tell all your friends.
Gremlins cereal. Gremlins, Gremlins, bite after bite. What a tasty way to satisfy a Gremlin appetite. Gremlins is a deliciously sweet, crunchy cereal that satisfies the hungry little Gremlin. That's in all of us. Gremlins, Gremlins, bite after bite. What a tasty way to satisfy a Gremlin appetite. Gremlins cereal is part of this complete breakfast. Gremlin, yum, yum.